are adolescent, you who accepted this invitation to participate with us in this event, and all the others present with the peace of the Lord, we are very happy to be here in the presence of the Lord for another evangelization of, of October. And the theme this month is time of restoration. And we believe that today the Lord will restore many hearts. Let's close our eyes so that we can begin our evangelization with the pleading for the blood of Jesus. Lord, we plead for the power that is in the blood of Jesus. And we pray that the Lord may sanctify us and that we may reach full fellowship with you. Our sins forgive and give us fellowship and joy of your Holy Spirit. We pray in mm. Jesus' name. Let's sing the song, I Am Here to Confess. Stop. Continue praising the Lord with another song, Seek the Lord. <laughs> Continue praising the Lord with the song Jerusalem, the city of my king. <laughs> Me 
sing another song before the word. I want to be faithful. and those who hear us with the peace of the Lord Jesus. And it's with great joy that we have all here for our evangelization of the month of October. And today the theme is Time of Restoration. And I invite all to stand in reverence to the reading of the word of the Lord. So I sent messengers mm -hmm. to them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave and go down to you? This text that we read is Nehemiah 6.3. The word of the Lord today will talk about restoration. And what is restoration? Restoration is mm -hmm. to bring back something that was broken to its first state, the perfect state, the original state. So what was Destroyed is going to be restored. You can fix a house or fix a relationship. Sometimes friendships are restored. Maybe if a friend meets other and and says, this, look, it's not like that, and they restored the a friendship. So today we will talk about the restoration of the friendship between God and men. God made man to be his friend. And the Lord loves men. So today we will talk about the story of Nehemiah and what happened with the people. So God, he chose the people to be his people for him to love and to love him back. And he made a covenant, a covenant of love. They would love the Lord and they would obey the Lord. And the Lord would love and would take care of them. The Lord then chose Jerusalem, and there the temple of the Lord was built. There the house of the Lord, the blessings of the Lord was poured, poured down. But the people, they deviated from the paths of the Lord. They did not trust the Lord. They started seeing the nations around and the gods and the customs of those nations. And they abandoned the word of the Lord, the orientations of the Lord, and they started to want to live their own experience and their own ways, doing whatever they wanted. And they thought that that would be great for them. But the Lord said, look, the enemy will enter in Jerusalem. And the Lord said, and it was fulfilled. The enemy took over Jerusalem, destroyed the walls, burnt down all the doors. And the people that were there, they were taken captive. Some remained, but they were poor because the enemy came and took everything. They took the riches of the temple, they destroyed the temple, they destroyed their houses, separated the families, taken the kids and left the, the parents behind. Because now 
who owned them was the enemy. They wanted to own themselves, but the enemy ended up owning them. So the Nehemiahs, who lived in the kingdom of Persia, and he worked for the king of Persia in the castle, he then heard about the situation of Israel, the situation of Jerusalem, how the walls were down, the doors were burnt, their despair and anguish, and he was saddened, and he prays, and he confesses to the Lord the sin of the people and his own sin, and he said, God, forgive us. We left you. We forgot your commandments. We forgot your counsels, and we started to walk by our own ways, but your word says that when we repent and when we change our, our will and came to our heart the desire and love of Jerusalem, you would bless us, Lord. So he pleads for a help from the Lord, and the Lord hears him. The king hears the desire of Nehemiah and tells him to go back to Jerusalem and also gives him everything to rebuild all the walls and doors and to restore. So then Nehemiah went to the city. He looked around, called the people and said, the Lord has been wonderful for us. He heard my prayer. I found out what was happening here. And the Lord opened the heart of the king and he gave us everything that we need. And the people were then rejoice. They started to rejoice and build with pleasure. And they knew that the Lord had mercy on them. And they started building the walls. So the enemies saw that and they thought, what do they want? Tobias, Jess, and Sambalat? They said, what do they want? Are they going to sacrifice again? Are they going to start to worship in Jerusalem? No, you're weak. You think you're going to start getting all the dust and build the walls again? But they didn't know that the Lord had everything planned for them and had prepared all things for them. But the people knew, and they didn't give heed to what the enemy was saying, and he, they continued to pray to the Lord, asking for help, and the Lord helped them. And they built the wall halfway. And when the enemy saw that, they said, oh, they're already halfway. So now what are we going to do? We're going to start fighting them. So we're going to enter and we're going to start killing all of them. But they didn't know that when the Lord operates, nothing can stop that. And then Nehemiah, he heard about that plan. And he called all the Israelites and he said, we're going to organize ourselves. We're going to work. But we're going to be paying attention. We're going to have the sword on our waist. We're going to have some just watching. And we're going to watch in the morning and at night. And that was that. Done was the war that they wanted to come against Israel. And the people was victorious. And they continue to build the wall with the Lord operating. And they finally ended that. They ended the wall, and now the only thing left was just the walls. And now, with that left, the enemies thought, now we need to find something else to do. They can't put the doors up. So they said, look, Nehemiah, come down. They gathered all the enemies, and they said, come here, Nehemiah, we want to talk to you. And they pretend to be friends. And they said, let's, let's build an alliance here. But Nehemiah answered him, saying, I am doing a great work. I cannot go down. I cannot leave Jerusalem. What do I have to do outside of Jerusalem? The Lord put in my heart what I needed to do in Jerusalem. The Lord put in my heart that I need to rebuild. The Lord put in my heart love for Jerusalem. I want the temple to be a place of feast again. We want to consecrate. We want to sacrifice to the Lord. We want to serve him. The Lord is with me. I'm not going down. This wall is the protection, is, this, is our security. And the word said that 
in the word that the walls would be salvation for them. Salvation is security in the Lord. No, I'm not going down. I'm not going to talk to you. And then they ended that work. And when everything was done, they all saw that the Lord had operated in favor of Israel. My beloved, the Lord has a message for us today. In this story, there was a lot to teach us. I told you that she, that God loved the people of Israel. But today, the Lord loves the whole world. The word says that God gave his only son. He loved the whole world in such a way that he gave his only son to die in our place so that we can have eternal life, a celestial Jerusalem. And the Lord wants to make an alliance, a covenant with me, with you, of love so that we can serve him, so that we can be ready to live in Jerusalem. And I said that the people were taken captive, right? Many people today are being taken captive Households are being destroyed because their spiritual life has been destroyed. The relationship with God. Today we see adolescents that are captive of drugs, vices, drinking. Adolescents who have bad habits far away from the Lord. They are captive and they can't come back to the presence of the Lord. They were taken. They were attracted. They made a mistake, they disobeyed the Lord, and they're far away from the Lord. But they were called. They were called to come back. Let's rebuild the walls. The Lord made a, an alliance with us, a covenant with us. And we have ways to rebuild. And the calling is for you. It's the calling for those who stayed as well. Those who stayed and were poor. Many are in church, but by their disobedience, by not giving ear to the word of the Lord and many times wanting to live like the world does, doing things that doesn't please the Lord, watching things that don't please the Lord, deviating their paths from the, the Lord. They live as poor, but the Lord has many things to give you, riches, spiritual gifts, experiences in the word. He wants to restore you. But I said that many... Many were taken captive, and many years went by before Nehemiah's, before Nehemiah came back. Many were born in captive, and they were never in Jerusalem. And if you were never in Jerusalem, if you never heard the voice of the Lord, and you don't know how it is to be directed by the Lord, He wants to restore this friendship with you. He wants you to know Him. He wants to speak to you. And right now, we will ask the Lord, Lord, give me a faithful heart. Help me. I want to serve the Lord. Everything is ready. And what do we need? We need Jesus. Jesus is the one who connects us to the Lord. And God gave us Jesus so that today we would have the right to say, God, forgive me. Like Nehemiah said, forgive me. I want you to change. It's not forgive me and I will continue the way I was. No, it's forgive me, Lord, and I want to change. Nehemiah, he came back. He helped them. He was next to them. And the Holy Spirit is next to us to give us all the directions so that we can rebuild our lives.
we greet all the adolescents with the peace of the Lord. We are coming to the end of this special service where all heard the word of the Lord about the time of restoration. And we will end praying, Pastor will be praying for all the adolescents and their families. And in this moment of prayer, you can put before the Lord what you want from Him. Throughout this isolation, the time that we're going through, many adolescents are going through difficult moments. Some are anxious, some are saddened. But in this prayer, surround your life to the Lord because He is the Prince of Peace. The pandemic brought so many uncertainties, but in, in our Lord, we have certainties. Like the psalmist said, certainly goodness and mercy mm -hmm. of the Lord will follow me every day of my life. Now the pastor will, play, will pray and I invite the adolescents to close their eyes and put your life and surrender your life now to the Lord. Lord, accept the prayers the wishes of your adolescents, those who are saddened, they, that may receive a blessing of your Holy Spirit, those who are insecure, that they may find security in you, and that all their households may now be blessed by your grace. Accept their prayers, Lord. And those who are surrendering more than their prayers, those who are surrendering their lives to you. Accept your adolescence. When your new name, we say that the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God the Father, and the consolations of the Holy Spirit may rest upon all of you now and forever. Amen. We would like to end saying that <clears throat> We will leave a number so that you can call and receive an assistance. It's the 1-800 number for Brazil. You can call and there's a pastor there that can answer and pray for you, for your family. Now, we're done. Peace of the Lord to all.